हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस एनीमिया एंड एनेस्थेशिया द डिसीज स्टेट रिलेटेड टू इरेथ्रोसाइट्स इंक्लूड एनीमिया एंड पॉलिसमिया दीज आर द टू कंडीशंस व्हिच आर रिलेटेड टू द इरेथ्रोसाइट्स एनीमिया इज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक कैरेक्टराइज्ड बाय डिक्रीज इन रेड सेल मास विथ मेन एडवर्स इफेक्ट बीइंग डिक्रीज इन ऑक्सीजन कैरिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ द ब्लड इन पॉलिसमिया there is erythrocytosis and it represents increase in hematocrit its consequences are primarily related to expanded red cell mass and resulting in increase in blood viscosity that is about polycythemia now we will see physio physiology of the anemia anemia is disease disease sign manifestation clinic manifest manifestation clinically as a reduced absolute number of circulating red cells there is reduced absolute number of circulating red cells there is decrease in hematocrit the decrease in hematocrit is used most often as a indicator of anemia anemia is defined as a reduction in one or more of major rbc indices these indices are reduced hemoglobin concentration reduced hematocrit and rbc count three kind three indices hemoglobin concentration hematocrit and rbc counts the anemia as a hemoglobin concentration less than 12 g per deciliter for women and less than 13 g per deciliter for the men however hemoglobin less than 11 g per deciliter in pregnant patient is considerably truly anemic in acute blood loss hematocrit may initially be unchanged decrease in hematocrit that exceeds 1% every 24 hours can only be explained by acute blood loss or intravascular hemolysis the most important adverse effect of anemia is reduction in arterial oxygen concentration and potential for decreased tissue oxygen delivery for example decrease in hemoglobin concentration from 15 to 10 g per deciliter results in 33% decrease in arterial oxygen content the initial compensation for this decrease in oxygen content is an increase in cardiac output this occurs via enhanced sympathetic nervous activity sympathetic nervous system activity and decrease in blood viscosity that accompanies the anemia there is also rightward shift of the oxygen hemoglobin curve which facilitates release of oxygen from hemoglobin to tissues this is followed by redistribution of blood redistribution of blood flow to myocardium lungs and brain muscle and skin muscle and skin blood flow decreases which results in pallor as does blood flow to the kidneys is decreased which stimulates erythroid precursors in the bone marrow to produce additional rbcs fatigue and low exercise tolerance indicate the inability of cardiac output to increase further to maintain tissue oxygenation this is most notable in anemic patients who are physically active or present with coronary artery disease then arthropnea dyspnea on exertion cardiomegaly pulmonary congestion ascites edema can occur as a consequence of high output heart failure in patients with severe anemia there are many causes and forms of anemia anemia the most common cause of chronic anemia are iron deficiency anemia anemia of chronic disease thalassemia and ongoing blood loss this is about the physiology of the anemia then transfusion trigger pre operatively transfusion for a sole purpose of purpose of facilitating elective surgery is rarely justified 
in an asymptomatic anemic patient. During the preoperative period, transfusion should be considered based on lost circulating blood volume, second hemoglobin level, third ongoing bleeding and risk of end organ dysfunction due to inadequate oxygenation. The 10 to 30 rule transfuse if hemoglobin level is less than 10 gram per deciliter or hematocrit less than 30 percent was once a common cited reference point. Patients with hemoglobin levels of 6 gram per deciliter get benefit from red cell transfusion. Patients with compensated chronic, chronic anemia with hemoglobin values between 6 to 10 gram per deciliter can tolerate these levels without evidence of end organ ischemia. The RBC transfusion have been associated with direct transfusion of infectious diseases such as hepatitis B, hepatitis C and HIV infection. Then critically ill and trauma patients transfusion are independently associated with longer intensive care units and hospital length lengths of the stay then higher mortality rates and increased incidence of ventilator associated pneumonia and increased mortality all these are associated with blood transfusion the immunomodulatory effects of rbc transfusion can lead to cancer recurrence then post operative bacterial infections Transfusion related lung injury and hemolytic transfusion reactions are common with RBC transfusion. An ex expected blood loss of 15% or less of total blood volume usually requires no blood replacement during surgery. Loss of 30% loss up to 30% can be replaced exclusively with crystalloid solution. Then a loss more than 30 to 40 percent generally requires RBC transfusion. This transfusion is required to restore oxygen carrying capacity. The transfusion is given with crystalloid or colloid solution to restore intravascular volume and maintain the perfusion. In cases of massive transfusion that means more than 50 percent of blood loss blood volume replaced within 24 hours, the RBC transfusion may need to be accompanied by administration of fresh frozen plasma platelets at a ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1. Patients with active coronary disease, unstable angina or acute myocardial infarction merit special considerations. The literature suggests Hematocrit of 20 to 30 percent may be appropriate transfusion trigger in patients with unstable coronary syndromes. Now we will see management of anesthesia. General concepts of during general the general concepts of for anemia. If elective surgery is performed in presence of chronic anemia, it is prudent to minimize likelihood likelihood of significant changes that could further interfere with oxygen delivery to tissues. Examples are drug induced decrease in cardiac output and left shift of the oxygen dissociation curve due to respiratory alkalosis from iatrogenic hyperventilation that will interfere with the oxygen delivery. Then decreased body temperature also shift of ODC oxygen dissociation curve to the left that is there is less oxygen release to the tissue. Third, decreased tissue oxygen requirements may accompany the myocardial depression effects of the anesthetic drugs and hypothermia. These offset the decrease in tissue oxygen delivery associated with anemia but to an un unpredictable degree. Sign symptoms of inadequate tissue oxygen delivery due to anemia may be difficult to appreciate during anesthesia. The effects of anesthesia on sympathetic nervous system and cardiovascular responses may 
blood usual increase in cardiac output associated with acute normal volemic anemia then volatile anesthetics may be less soluble in plasma in plasma of the anemic patients because of the decrease in concentration of lipid rich rbcs however the effect of this decrease solubility is likely to offset by offset by an increased cardiac output therefore it seems unlikely that clinically detectable difference in the rate of induction of inhalational anesthetics or vulnerability to an anesthetic overdose would be present in anemic patients compared to patients without anemia this is about the management of anesthesia then we will see evaluation and classification of anemia anemia can be classified based on erythro erythrokinetic mechanism that that is anemia due to ineffective erythropoiesis then anemia due to increased destruction of rbcs and third anemia due to blood loss the anemia can also be classified on morphological characteristics that is microcytic normocytic or macrocytic based on the mean corpuscular volume initial evaluation of anemia anemic patient should include cbc with rbc count and standard indices wbc count platelet count in addition special indices such as such as rbc distribution rbc distribution width rdw which represents a measure of variation in red cell size if rdw more than 14 is abnormal and reticulocyte count more than 2% is abnormal can indicate increased rbc destruction the analysis of peripheral blood smear it is essential to evaluate rbc morphology now we will see about microcytic anemias the microcytic anemias are those when mean corpuscular volume mcv mean corpuscular volume less than 80 ft it is less than 80 ft the most common cause of microcytic anemia are iron deficiency and thalassemia sideroblastic anemia and anemia of the chronic disease can also present as microcytic anemia now we will see iron deficiency anemias the nutritional deficiency of iron as a cause of anemia is found only in infant and small children in adults iron deficiency anemia reflects de- depletion of iron stores caused by chronic blood loss third typically these losses are from gi gastrointestinal tract or from female genital tract during menstruation when pregnant women are susceptible to develop iron deficiency anemia because of increased rbc mass required during gestation and the needs of the fetus for iron now we will see the diagnosis the patients experiencing chronic blood loss may not be able to absorb sufficient amount of iron from the diet to form hemoglobin as rapidly as rbcs are lost as a result rbcs are produced with too little hemoglobin most of the cases of iron deficiency anemia are mild with hemoglobin concentration of 9 to 12 g dl per dl there is constant decrease in serum ferritin concentration serum ferritin concentration is less than 41 ng per ml a low reticulocyte count a decreased serum iron level and a reduced transferritin saturation less than 20% the absence of stainable iron in bone marrow aspirate is confirmatory evidence of the iron deficiency anemia now we will see the treatment ideally iron deficiency anemia should be treated with ferrous iron salts they are administered orally and the iron stores replished slowly oral iron should be considered if elective surgery can be postponed for 2 to 4 months 
to allow correction of iron deficiency. Then the evidence of favorable response to iron therapy is an increase in hemoglobin concentration of approximately 2 gram per deciliter in about 3 weeks and, and a return of hemoglobin concentration to normal in about 6 weeks. Continued bleeding indicate, is indicated by reticulocytosis and failure of hemoglobin concentration to increase in response to iron therapy. The oral iron therapy should be continued for at least one year after the source of blood loss that caused the iron deficiency has been corrected. Then if surgery is scheduled just few weeks intravenous IV iron preparation can be used to correct the anemia. The efficacy of IV iron is superior to that of oral preparation. A total dose of 1 to 1.5 gram iron is usually adequate to replenish stores preoperatively and decrease the need for perioperative transfusion. This is about the iron deficiency anemia. Now we will see about the normocytic anemias. The normocytic anemias have mean corpuscular volume MCV in between 80 to 100 FT. The evaluation of normocytic anemia includes examination of peripheral blood smear for presence of abnormal shaped RBCs. The measuring the reticulocyte count which will be low in case of bone marrow suppression but high in case of hemolytic anemia and measuring the indices of hemolysis such as increased LDH, lactate dehydrogenase and heptoglobin and indirect bilirubin levels. The serum creatinine levels will be elevated with anemia of kidney disease. A search for source of acute blood loss should be undertaken. The most common normocytic anemia are hemolytic anemias, anemia of chronic disease, anemia of kidney disease, aplastic anemia and acute blood loss. Thank you.